All right, good morning, everyone. Welcome to The Brief, Tuesday, June 9th. All right, mission objectives standard out there to grow our money, protect our money, and then live off our money. As far as our tactical objectives, what we're going to look at today is basic index investing. <coughs> People in here are uh, used to using individual stocks, and we're comfortable with that, but there are times to be able to do uh, index investing as well. Uh, so we'll talk about that and why you would want to do that. Okay, as far as the academic topic of the day, we're gonna talk about some IRA and 401k type questions. I threw some uh, stuff up there in the chat just to kind of guide my own uh, thoughts on what I wanna talk about there. But certainly if the stuff I threw up there um, makes a, uh, gives you any questions, then go ahead and put your questions up in there as well. All right, for our flow, we'll talk long-term stuff. Short-term, we'll get the open, back to the short-term, complete that, and then into the, uh, the long-term from there. All right, as far as the market review, we'll go over to TD Ameritrade and take a look at the one-year. You probably saw the, <clears throat> excuse me, at the one-year chart of the S&P. Um, the, what you see there is, you probably saw the headline yesterday, it says the S&P has fully recovered and that is now in green for the year. And that is actually true. But then you say, but why wouldn't the top of that chart be above the level right here, right? Well, this is the index that tracks it, that's one. And then secondly, I was having this discussion with somebody yesterday, uh, there are dividends that get kicked out and it does pay on a calendar date for the SPY and that's what you don't see reflected in charts is the dividend payouts. So uh, we'll, there's only been one dividend I've got on another screen you'll see uh, once we go long term, but it paid off a dividend somewhere in this range uh, is where the S&P paid, paid its dividend. And again, it's a 2.2% I believe dividend or so uh, over the course of the year. So. <clears throat> that's where we are obviously what's that seven green uh candlesticks there so things have been trucking higher while the market's op open at least and then a nice big uh gap up and of course big move friday so with that you may have already looked at the futures the futures are in red that's not uncommon it's not time to quit take our football and go home because that would be the common result of having seven basically straight up days so uh, if it's red today, even if it's a percent and a half, two percent, really don't care. Uh, that's pretty common. Okay, over into looking at the specific action. <clears throat> Past five days here, you can see it's a 15-minute chart. Had the big move up on Friday, and then yesterday, pretty much a move up, kind of stagnated to about halfway through the day, and then moved up from there. Uh, so you see the big sell-off overnight, and then kind of sideways in pre-market action. Down about a percent, we'll keep an eye on that. Uh, a lot of big names are down. Uh, if we'll, uh, we'll see those in the headlines. As far as the actual calendar itself, uh, Tiffany's uh, is one of the companies that basically whiffed earnings again this morning. They were expected to, um, but you know that's a name that we've been kind of following with their merger talk with Louis Vuitton and that kind of busted. Now bad earnings, so we'll see how far they get hit. All right, that is it for the big board. We will go back to the headline review now and go around the world. <clears throat> All right, lots of red. Uh, let's see, down over a percent. We already talked about that. NASDAQ, again, uh, has been creeping higher. So the Dow has been outpacing the NASDAQ. So you, it would make sense that the Dow takes a bigger breather than the NASDAQ, so that does make sense there. All right, as far as Europe was solidly across the red, almost a couple percent uh, across the board. Uh, they'd been on fire, so again, not uncommon there. Asia was mixed, Japan down, China and Hong Kong are up. As far as bonds, bonds took a little hit. Remember we were getting, we were above that 0.9% on the 10 year, hoping to get that 1%. Uh, moved opposite, basically redid the, the last correction up down around 0.8 or so. All right, and then uh, here was yesterday's move. So a nice big move up if we were to retrace that and more. Uh, that is not a big deal. VIX still under 30, so that's a good sign. Uh, oil dropped a little bit. 
still having trouble getting up to that uh, forty dollar range, and then everything in the precious, the, the three that anybody cares about, is all up a little bit. Gold up, decent amount there. All right, so back to the U.S. market and around headlines. Once I stop clicking here, okay. Uh, you see the big airlines, those have kind of been on fire. So you think travel, you think airline, cruise lines, hotels, um, all of those are coming in. You know, I don't consider many, if any of those long-term plays because of their very uh, nature and their thin balance sheets. Uh, so I stay out of those, but we may see some of them short today. Uh, so something to keep an eye on uh, out there. Okay, let's see. Musk in the news. All right, it's gonna be uh, retail, a lot of retail names today. We will talk about specifics once we get down here. Okay, AstraZeneca was a name we talked about briefly yesterday. Uh, it was Predator talking about that name short that ended up uh, working a 3R level uh, for short, worked a little bit later in the day if I remember right. Yeah, this is kind of funny. Uh, the uh, I, I clicked on this earlier and read it. They were talking about the um, how the younger folks out there, basically they call them Robin Hood traders, but you can kind of think millennials we're not scared of this market sell-off at all. Well, first of all, they haven't kind of seen the full 10 year run, but the sell-off was a buying opportunity for a lot of them. So again, putting money to work while uh, billionaire investors, older, far more conservative, thought it was the end of the world. And uh, they probably might've been scared for their own health during that time as well. So a lot of negativity in the air. And I saw some very uh, normally uh, sound people making rash decisions. If you remember Bill Ackman getting on TV and almost busting into tears with his uh, big rant. And at the same time, he's like, this is the end of the world and I'm buying everything I can get my hands on. So whatever. Uh, should have been held accountable for that, in my opinion. Macy's is a retail name that's on fire today. Uh, they, they had earnings either last night or this morning. Can't remember, but you know, uh, outpaced what they had anticipated for their earnings as far as the adjustments made. So that was pretty good. There's your negative Tiffany uh, headline. The, the deal uh, we'll see, but fell 44%. So you can see Tiffany uh, on the way down today. We do have the Fed meeting. I don't see a headline for it, but the Fed meeting is every six weeks. So that uh, starts today and ends with the Fed release tomorrow. Obviously we're at zero on the interest rates. I don't expect anything to change there. I don't expect us to go negative. Um, we will see. Yeah, the police, uh, social unrest, police issues, uh, all of that will continue to kind of dominate the, uh, the headlines here. We'll see how all that works out should not affect the market unless it kind of gets extreme, if you will. Amazon, yeah, got a price target bump yesterday up to 3,300. I could see that happening easily. Okay, uh, that's it for the headline review. Let's go ahead and take a look at the Schwab Big Board for index investing. Uh, it's easy to say some folks will stay index based until they get above 100,000 in their accounts. It's not a bad way to start. I think index investing is unexciting, if you will. In other words, I want to specifically know what company I own, what companies I don't, right? Uh, I tend to, for my own portfolio, have sometimes as few as five stocks that I'm holding. Generally, I'm holding that 14 to 20 basket for maintaining diversification. There's times when I can thin that out. Uh, with an index, if you hold any of these indices, if you will, you're going to be looking at holding, uh, you know, 100 at a minimum, sometimes up to 500 or even, you know, 2,000 uh, kind of stocks out there. So a lot of, a lot of different names. And with you, when you have that, if you can, uh, you can think you own the good with the bad. Um, so 
uh, I, why would I want to own the bad, right? So of all the stocks that are out there, let's just pick the best. But uh, if you do index invest, it's not a bad way to, to go to kind of just put your money in the middle and hope for the best. So when you think of your 401k type investing, then the, um, that's what you're generally getting, either index fund or mutual fund based type thing. So um, let's go ahead and talk about these across the board. Uh, we'll pause for just a second. If that's not working, kill it and like bring it back up because I couldn't get it to work. Um, working some tech issues on our end on the TDA platform. Um, if you're having TDA platform issues, put it in the uh, chat there. Okay, as far as the different indices we're looking at here is, uh, first of all, the SPY, which is the one we talked about on the other screen. Uh, so on this screen, you can see the big D is where it pays out that dividend. Uh, somebody asked about that yesterday. Um, so yeah, it does pay dividends four times. It's an actual date and you have the standard record date and all of that jazz uh, for the payout. Another thing I used to do in the uh, trading room that I always talk about where I was online in New York and in a day like yesterday, one of the hip pocket things that she had was the uh you would if you could if everything was going long you would simply uh and you couldn't find any shorts you would simply just take the spy long at the open obviously that would have worked friday it would have worked yesterday um you just uh just take the spy long or the cues long and go from there um, i will say as far as a tradable thing cues are a little bit better than the spy but we'll get into that here in a second so that's kind of the spot. That's what everything really, if you're gonna talk the market averages and things, that's what you're talking about is generally the spot. So moving over to the Qs, the Qs represent same thing that's the Qs represent the NASDAQ. So when you think of the volatility involved, um, there's gonna be a little more volatility in the NASDAQ and you see there at the top level, it actually is higher than it was uh, above the, the February, I think that's February, mid-February, peak, if you will. So um, that makes sense because tech tends to outpace both to the upside and the downside uh, there. So the cues are another play. You can throw that in there and buy with your account, max it out and go long uh, on these big updates. Okay. As far as the IWM is the uh, tracks the Russell 2000. So again, those are small caps. So a lot more volatility. Sometimes the small caps get left behind, and I will say that is what's happening right now. And here's why. When you think balance sheet strength, small cap companies are the ones that might have more debt and be in a little more trouble. That's a might. I know there are always exceptions. But um, folks are generally, they're the, if you think the, the whale in the ocean, all the little fish, well, it's kind of the little fish following the whales, right? So it's going gonna, it's gonna, to, they'll catch up later on. So it's not a bad place to have some money, or if you were thinking a big portfolio, a bunch of individual stocks, sometimes I'll put an IWM piece in there of one position size. Uh, for most folks, that's you know $25,000 position in the IWM. Um, so that's how I use that. Uh, MD, MDY is the one off to the right. That's the same thing, except it kind of shoots the gap there. It's the mid cap 400. So you have your large caps, which is your S&P, you have your mid caps, and then you have your small caps in the IWM. M. Same thing, if you have largely individual stocks, large caps in your portfolio, then having a piece of MDY is kind of nice because it'll catch up uh, later on. So uh, the SDY is simply if you are more dividend growth or more conservative or moderately conservative type of investor, uh, the SDY is a S&P 500 dividend type fund, so it really focuses on uh, dividend growth there, and I don't know the um, actual dividend offhand, but it is bigger than the, uh, the SPY itself. Um, so you can see, and that's, that's under, underperformed a little bit in relation to everything else. And that makes sense because it's more conservative uh, type holding. And then TLT is basic treasury bonds. So when you look at bonds, how they're supposed to act with the market, generally they're opposite the market. So when the stock market goes up, the bonds are going down. In March, when the stock market started selling off, the bonds were supposed to go up. That for sure didn't happen. Everything went down. 
market went down, bonds went down, gold went down. It didn't matter. It was going one way and that was down. And that's because people were panic selling whatever they could get their hands on to sell. Well, obviously we were poised to take advantage of that because it went from a normal sell off of uh, 10 to 15 percent down to, you know, past 20 to 30 um, uh, percent as well. So big moves uh, to the downside there is you kind of get the try to sell, get off the coaster, you know, point, and then it's the, okay, crap, well, I just got to hold what I got, take whatever cash I can find, and then, and then rebuy uh, as well. Okay, so that is it for the six uh, index funds. We are, we're going to take a look at the uh, lower tab. We may, may have some issues here, so go ahead and click on that. Okay, what we're going to do is he's going to reboot this. Let's go to the think pipes for the big screen, and we're going to be a little bit out of order while we uh, reboot some things. So um, you can take care of rebooting that. Here's what I'll talk about as far as the, uh, the short-term stuff that I came up with while we uh so that's just kind of a placeholder screen i'm going off of my notes uh from now um the if you can put m in the big screen this is macy's so macy's had gapped up earlier and then it was now coming back in uh a little bit so i don't like it as much as i did i saw some comments about tiff Put TIFF in the big screen. All right, yeah, bad news and gapping up. So let's throw that under the Hertz uh, is another one that why in the world is this stock moving up and has been moving up significantly? Uh, it had, and now that's obviously uh, moving down from there. That's a pretty interesting short. It closed at 560 there and it went all the way up to $7 for what I would call no reason. And then dropped all the way down to four pre-market this morning and now it's back up to 470. So that's kind of crazy. So we will take a look at Hertz. Again, they did file for bankruptcy. So you would expect that they would uh, continue down there. Um, put in uh, TLDR. Uh, TLRD going from memory here okay this is uh, Joseph A bank uh, they are also talking about bankruptcy so when you think of that you've got a uh, uh, sorry about the blank screen there you have a um, uh, I see what's going on uh, yeah they're here I have it on the screen down here Sorry about that. So you have a lot of different companies because it, it, you're, if the government mandates that you well, can't go somewhere, right. it's not like you're going to go somewhere and start spending there. Um, so that'd be another one to take a look at short, even though it's at a small price point, you might think, well, does it have room to fall further? It's like, oh yeah, that could definitely fall further. So we will put that on our short list as well. And again, that's TLRD. Okay. We are catching back up. We're going to put the Schwab uh, screen back to you. So we'll get back to our normal screeners and take a look at, here's the volume results. Macy's we already talked about. Um, not gapping up as much as it was. Nicola, oh my goodness. Okay, let's click on uh, NKLA. Okay, for the love of all that's good. So I'm having a conversation with a buddy from Phoenix on Sunday night and we start talking about Nikola and we start talking about, Hey, we need to get into this name. And he's like, Hey, I want my kids in this name. Hey, we're going to open accounts, so a bunch of paperwork in and geez, what a call. Okay. Uh, and I have to say this, that this is not often in, in from some of the names that are in the room, you know exactly what I'm talking about with this particular stock is, I have to apologize. This is like dropping the easiest touchdown pass right on the hands. Uh, I mean, wide open, and I completely dropped it. I should have bought this as we talked about it yesterday. As soon as we hung up out of here, I went off on some other projects. I liked it. It was already up over 20%, and I was like, I'm going to wait for it to come in. Okay. 
Uh, it did not. Uh, it went straight up pretty much all day. It did have, I did have the one opportunity when it peaked at 60 and it dropped down to uh, uh, 50 or so. I sat and watched it. Yeah, and it took off again. So as far as uh, if you have this in your portfolio, you entered up in the 60s and you have to be like, holy crap, is that the worst entry? Uh, well, it was yesterday. I was pretty mad about it, but I had to, the more I read about it, the more excited everybody's going to be about this name. So it was just on fire. So I'm like, okay, fine. Money's going in. And from that point all the way up to, if you look in the upper left, it's up at 83 now. So for a stock that I bought yesterday, that's up 30% from where you own it, probably. I'm apologizing. That doesn't happen very often. <laughs> But yeah, there was more moves. So when you think of an entry point, mine uh, was kind of terrible, if you will, for even though you, you got 30% of that gain, you did not get the 100% of the gain. And I was on it. So in relation to thinking about your 3R, and what I keep saying with trading is you have your thesis, you have everything set up. And when you're right, you want to get paid the full amount. You don't just want to make a little. Like this was a long and this is a long-term investment kind of thing. Um, but I didn't really want just 30% yesterday. I wanted the whole 100% yesterday um, and I didn't get it. So uh, I need to do better. So you could for a trade take a, yeah, thank you. But yeah, but still sitting there. I mean, it, literally I was thinking about that while I was trying to fall asleep last night. I was kind of pissed about it because um, I had it and I dropped it. And then maybe picked it up and ran it in on the next, in the next series, but still pissed about it. Um, okay. Back on point as far as you could take Nikola as a continuation gap. I still think it's on fire. I still think it's going up today. Uh, the stuff ca that came out last night, now everybody knows about it because the stock moves 100% a day. And of course now, uh, literally your uh, Uber driver knows about it today. So, um, <clears throat> all right, so those are up. So let's really look at the gap downs today. We've got some airlines, uh, cruise lines, <clears throat> Occidental Petroleum's the name, uh, OXY. Let's go ahead and click on that. <clears throat> okay. Uh, OXY and CHK, which is Chesapeake Energy, get thrown around together a lot because they like to dance on the verge of bankruptcy. So I thought there was a bankruptcy rumor here with OXY, but I think it's a CHK. Put CHK in there. Yeah, so they closed at uh, 70 yesterday and they're sitting down at 36. So yeah, holding the bag on that one. Um, yeah, Chesapeake, I've always hated that name. But, uh, but yeah, you could. So you see, click on the uh, gapping down thing right there. Um, yeah, huge gap down. I think it's bankruptcy chatter. That's what it is, bankruptcy chatter. I think that almost assuredly will happen. So that's a short you could take with something that's already gapped down 50%, though. It doesn't really fit our criteria. Okay, let's look at it. Boeing's down 4%. Oh, my gosh, after moving 60% up last week um, or in the past week. So let's go to the next tab. All right. Uh, there's your Nikola Long up 20% already. Uh, Fate Therapeutics, not all that interested in. Uh, the T VIX, short term VIX. So expecting again the VIX to go up. People trade the VIX almost exclusively. You have to get into like derivative math if you're doing that. Okay, Tiffany's still in the green. Let's look at the sh the decliners. Okay, in my opinion, uh, Chesapeake's fallen too far too fast. The only other volume is Tesla. It's going down 2%. I don't see anything there. I don't like the Boeing. Uh, I'm not shorting Boeing here. You could short it just because it ran up so much, but generally you want, you want that headline, right? So let's look at some other names. I'm going off the gapping thing to the less. Let's look at uh, GCO. Disappointing earnings, low volume though, so that's not going to work. C O N N. 
Cons, that's a uh, retail or a uh, grocery store, if I remember right. Half of the volume there, it's from 11 down to 1060. Pretty big miss. Kind of bread basket for the numbers we're looking at. Let's look at SFIX. So again, down from 25 down to 23 or so. Revenue miss. So 25, 23, let's see, what is that uh, percentage wise? Click on that headline, gapping down. So that's 5.2%, that's a bread basket for us, stitch fix. Um, look at their one year chart over here. I'm looking at the one year chart on a different screen just to see what the, the history of stitch fix looks like. Okay, Stitch Fix's story, they went from 29 in February down to 11. They've almost been straight up since to 26 or so. So that would make sense with they come in uh, a shorting story. So I like that one. I think I'm gonna do Stitch Fix uh, myself there for short. All right, let's look at MOV. Movado Group, that's the watchmaker. Gapping down from 14 to 13 and a half, low volume. All right, let's go BTI. British American Tobacco. Not gonna touch that one. Let's go, last one, we'll look at short uh, C-A-S-Y. Oh, Casey's General Stores, all right. Yeah, low volume there. So, okay, uh, let's go over to the uh, the big screen. Uh, no new names, so don't need to go over the rules today for our challenge. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and enter my trade here while we're getting the TD Ameritrade platform set up. I'm gonna use Stitch Fix Short. And again, you can put, uh, you can take the same trade as I do as well. Oh, is that volume right? 1300. Uh, put it back in over here or click on it right here. Just checking the volume on it real quick. Make sure we're okay. Yep, 88,000 on the volume. So it'll have the volume by the time we uh, go in there. Um, all right. So as far as the opening 2335 right now, ooh, I like that. Uh, 2309, a high 2375. Uh, about a 40 cent stop, man, maybe 30 cent stop, I think, is what I'm going to look at. Short 30. I'll go at two minute in, out at 10 minute. Okay, that's my trade. It's in there. This is one I would also, if you were going to take real money or a paper trade, I'm going to call the actual stitch fix. Stitch fix in there um uh yeah you can type that in for me if you will he's going to repeat that trade i, I did, didn't get it out to everybody there okay so we'll have stitch fix in the uh the big screen here and then let's see if there's any other uh trades coming out entered yet there's a alk let's put alk upper right Make sure the sound's on for the bell. Check my internet here, just right there. Next one over, there you go, click. Yep, okay. Got an internet warning, hope we don't lose anybody. Okay, got A-OK -okay up there, and then let's put, um, short hertz, okay, we'll do HTZ at that bottom right. All right, let's see, who are we missing from here? Uh, burner, wanna hop in with your trade real, real quick, you gotta beat the bell. There we go, Hunter of Tiff, Tiff short for burner. Okay, uh, we got that in there. Okay, so we're opening and let's see. 
Uh, we got a pre-market buy, but you get the open for the means of the uh, for the turn for the um, competition. So we'll keep an eye on that. We'll watch Stitch, Stitch Fix first. Let me fix that screen while we're watching. So again, Stitch Fix short. What we'd like to see is that green bar there, and we'd like to see that green bar kind of go up to around 23.30 or 23.40 or so. Uh, and we'd like to see that for a good two, maybe three minutes before it actually clicks over and we would take the, uh, the actual trade short. All right, for the open, remember, yeah. Yep, okay, yeah, I guess you're right. Hard to tell with the open there. We'll get that in a second. Okay, the way TIFF is sitting up, or excuse me, the way uh, Stitch Fix is setting up, I like that. I'd like it to go a little bit higher there. If you look at Hertz, Hertz just fell off the cliff there. 60 cents in that first minute. Okay, that's a good sign out of Stitch Fix. If it goes above 23.75, you would consider that a busted trade. Okay, let's take Stitch Fix. This is a real-time trade here, so 23.35. This again is Stitch Fix sort, 23.35 is where I called I would take it. So he'll draw that in. And again, you would take it a, a 30 cent stop on that trade. So 23.30 up to 23.65 would be the stop at and we'd be out of the trade. So you don't have to drop anymore. So Stitch Fix is busted there. We don't, yeah, there you go. Kill that one. Uh, I'm not sure I like that sense of humor since it was my trade. But uh, rolling over to Hertz in the big screen. All right, let's see. Hertz was... Okay, a thousand short on Hertz, 10 cent stop and 30% for real are in at two minutes and out at five minutes. It stopped, yeah, uh, Hertz has halted, which is great news actually for you. Um, you won't be, you'll be out of the trade when it resumes trading. Uh, you don't get to, you know, because obviously the no shares are changed in hands, but that is a great sign. Um, what, Put your arrow, put the pin right on that. Did it stop at the one minute? Okay, it stopped at the open. So you actually wouldn't be in it yet there, Predator, since you entered at the second minute. See what I'm saying? So when it pops up, you'll get that price as your entry price, and then you'll be out at the five minute point. Does that make sense? So uh, if you don't like that call, uh, make a commentary in the uh, chat. Okay, um, okay, cool. All right, we'll look at, uh, we'll wait and see what happens. So Hertz will be the entry on the next bar. Okay, TIFF looks like it's going up. So we had the opening there. It looks like a 124.10ish uh, or so. Kind of right there. Uh, we'll call it, yeah, 124.10. And let's see, TIFF was a short, so it looks like it's probably not gonna hold that. Let's, yeah, I know, right? Um, the, uh, we'll go back to Stitch Fix in a second. Don't need to right now though, but it's probably falling off the cliff. I, that's the way that works. Short TIFF at 124.50, upper stop 126, so that would be a, $150, $50 up stop. So that's you're still in that trade. $124.10. So a buck fifty would be $125.60 is his upper stop there. You can draw that for TIFF. All right, and then three times that would be 450 down below. So one uh, about you can just go down to 120. 
or so, whatever you can draw there low. That would be the three R point in TIFF. So that's still working. Let's bring TIFF over to the uh, main screen and Hertz and upper right. All right, so let's see. Hertz isn't trading yet. We'll keep an eye on TIFF. We got Chesapeake was our uh, short. Looks like it may be stopped as well. Or halted, excuse me, use appropriate terminology. WLL falling off the cliff. Yeah. Straight down. Well, there, there was your short. If you took, if you want to take that at the open, look at that thing. Thoughts on that? Thoughts is I would not touch it. Uh, looks. Let's look at NKLA in the bottom right. All right, NKLA selling, but popped up to 92 and change at the open down in the 80s now. Okay, cost basis for us, I don't know, somewhere in the 60s. Oh, there's Hertz striping down. So you've got, you entered at uh, the top of that red bar, right there, and about 409. There you go. 409 is gonna be your entry point. Since you were stopped, I'm gonna say you're gonna be open now for four minutes. Is that fair since you were going to be in from let's see two to five so i guess that's three minutes so you'll be open for three minutes from where you took it if that doesn't work for you complain in the uh the big yellow pad there but it looks like it is going to work and yeah in the real world you'd already be uh you'd already be out of that trade because you've hit your three r in that drop wow look at that thing go So yeah, I think uh, Predator, I think that even though there's a big pushback right there, I'd imagine that will go uh, continue to sell off as well. Okay, uh, Nicola, actually might've been stopped. Maybe that's me, maybe that's my, me getting stopped. But I think Nicola got stopped to the downside too. Actually halted, excuse me. Um, okay, let's see what the markets are doing real quick while we're watching that. Okay, down a percent in the Dow, percent in the S&P. So we'll check that out. All right, so let's see, we had three minutes. So not this minute, let's put Hertz in the main screen. So we can see it a little easier. All right, in the upper right, you can put, uh, let me switch to with TIFF. Oh, there you go. You're uh, you're stopped again in Hertz. That's or you halted. Excuse me, again in Hertz. T too funny. So stuff dropping off the cliff uh, today. Okay, let's see in the upper. Let's in uh, in KLA long. That's uh, not working. TLRD. Let's put that in the lower right. RD. Okay, that was a short, had the big move down, it's backing all the way up. Um, this is an interesting chart, we used to talk about this. You see how there's like seven in a row and each green uh, candlestick is shorter. So it's going up to a head and that's where you would take a short right here. You'd get that double top, those two green things sticking up. So you'd wait for this one to close and the one that's bouncing right now, you wait for that to close, and then if the next one started red at all, you would short it. And I'm talking a TLRD. So in a uh, short scenario where it falls off the cliff, bounces all back up, you're looking for that nice curve up, and then it wouldn't be this one, it'd be the next, next candlestick over once this minute closes out. If it hits red, then you would short it again right there.
So right there, you would take it at 161 short. You'd put your stop at like 171. And um, it's not quite a scalp, but uh, you would take lots of shares with a short stop, like a thousand shares and a 10 cent stop. Because if it's either going to hold, if it holds 170 right here on uh, TLRD, it generally will hold it all day. So you get that big drop, it goes back up in that first half an hour trading, wherever it kind of peaks out, it generally does a slow leak throughout the day is the, is the pattern there. So anyhow, it's another trading pattern you can think about. And again, it's got to hold 171 there, which struggling with, but we shall see. All right, Predator, whenever uh, Hertz opens, we'll just give you that price as your um, price. So it'll be the first tick of the next bar. But it looks like it's going to be uh, probably a uh, five, six R trade. All right, going across the green board. Uh, let's see, we got Shopify up, uh, Netflix, Donkey Kong, they call it because it's on like Donkey Kong, but that's DraftKings. Treasuries are up, you know, when you ever see SPTL, that okay, it's like, all right, that's the market's in the red then if the treasuries are up. J&J, uh, &J, Johnson & Johnson. Gold up, which is GLD. Again, that's the way to, uh, that's the way to take it. If you if you buy gold and put that in your portfolio, let's look on the red side. I bet you're some red, uh, big red names out there. Clickstream again, penny stock down 20%. That's not uncommon. Our favorite, LK, Luckin Coffee. We don't need to pull that chart. We can see we know what the pain is. So embrace the pain. Uh, hold on, it's going to pay off. We just don't know when. Uh, Delta Airlines, Blackstone Mortgage Trust, Southwest, Callaway Golf. Uh, Brigham Minerals, local Austin name. XLE is energy. XLE's kind of been on fire. So um, makes sense for that to correct. That's too ugly to look at. Go back to the green. All right, that trade in Tailored would have busted out at the 170 short stop there. Let's take a look at CONN in our lower right. All right, you opened down at the low of the day. I said I'd give you the open predator, which is actually 3.4. So 0 0.7 uh, for your trade into what was that, a 10 cent stop on Hertz. Scroll back up, see what his stop was. 10 cent stop. So that's a seven hour trade for the predator. Looks like the streak may uh, continue. All right, cons would not have worked as a short, climbed over a dollar at the open. Uh, so yeah, Hertz, how awesome is that? So it opens and it appears halted again. Now from it's the move from halted to the upside, 3.4 up to 3.85 and gets halted again. So pretty, uh, pretty good time, pretty good time there. All right, so the TIFF trade is still alive. I, li I like that. I'm not unhappy with the action so far. It's kind of been not much action, but uh, that thing could turn around and, uh, and stripe down pretty good. Uh, go to the five minute chart on TIFF. Your stop's been plenty safe. It was above, I like the stop and that it's been above, you know, except for that one big green aftermarket thing, it's above all the, uh, all the traffic there. So the movement's to the downside, so that could pay off. All right, you can go back to a one minute today chart on that. All right, let's put uh, NKLA in the bottom right. Oh, down in the 60s. All right, well, uh, if, you, if you wanted NKLA and uh, you wanted more of it, it looks like we're gonna get our opportunity there. So that's a name we'll keep an eye on. All right, lots of stuff for me to catch up on in the chat. So I'm gonna look at that real quick. All right, let's see, going all the way back up to the top. Thanks for all the chat, small group today.
Okay, you actually took the trade burner at 124.50. So yeah, you're hanging about even. So I wouldn't be worried about uh, that right there. I like your stops. Not quite a three R stop to the bottom side there though. More of a two R. Okay, WLL, Petroleum Company is first to file for bankruptcy stops, collapses. Uh, yeah, it, there, there can be uh, you know WLL or CHK, um, Geech trading. I mean, that's all you can do is you can hop in there and trade these things. Uh, I would not touch them as an investment. I really wouldn't touch them as a trade much unless they were, you know, you, if you take a, if you take a bankruptcy thing, you're going to take it right at the open, right? When everybody's starting to dump shares. So, okay. Future bankruptcy candidates. Yeah. I think you're going to see some Cert certainly the headlines are going to be out there. Hertz Chesapeake uh, stitch fix is fine. It's not going bankrupt. Yeah, great call. You still think it's a great call? It's almost back to where we bought it. Mm -hmm. Bane of my existence, Nicola. All right. Yep. You want to be called and sometimes you lose. You are correct with the pair of aces analogy from Texas Hold'em. What was A-OK? -okay? Geese, did we even look at yours? Pardon et moi. Let's go A-OK -okay in the bottom right. A uh, thousand shares, is that long or short, Geech? Uh, is that a minus 20? So if that would have, if that's a minus 20, let's see, we opened here, 48.36. It held 48.56. All the way there. So yeah, sorry about that, Geech. Uh, let's see, go ahead. The, what I call for the top there, 48.36. So up to 56. Uh, it was long, okay. Then uh, 48.36 minus 20, 48.16. So yeah, you would have busted, uh, busted out of that almost immediately on that first bar down. Uh, there, Geech. Sorry about that. Yep. Okay. Sorry, I missed it earlier. All right. Yep. Tiff is the only one still alive. No, I was giving that to you, Predator. I think you would have stayed in that trade, even though it stopped. Short on Hertz. Yep, yep, yep. Short on Stitch Fix. Stopped out. Yep. CHK. Got it. Boo. LK. Yeah, I'm with you. Okay. Let's refresh the market here. Dow down over percent. Chesapeake halted. Okay. Yep, that's a good point there, uh, Burner. Hopefully everybody can see that. Uh, you need to have all panelists and attendees uh, selected as well. So, yep, uh, put that in there earlier. Okay, so TIFF is still alive. We'll keep an eye on that out to the 20. That's got one more minute. Um, that was short. Looks like it's gonna finish in the red, so we'll keep an eye on that. Okay, as far as questions, let's take a look. When it comes to major indices, do certain ones tend to outperform the others during certain business cycles? Well, the Dow is a little more industrial. So, I mean, yes is the answer. It's not uh, to your question there, uh, Predator. Uh, it is uh, not something I try to really use a lot. Uh, the ones that I use are the ones I talked about for mid caps and small caps. I do try to, if I see them lagging, I will buy into it, hold that until they catch up, which can take months. So, um, uh, but as far as, you know, growth, you could say that the Dow might outperform the NASDAQ. Kind of depends. 
I mean, NASDAQ tends to run first because that's your tech name. So it's the leader both up and down. Uh, then it kind of drags the Dow with it. The S&P is kind of in the middle of both of those. So not much of an answer. Um, yeah, mid caps, if they get left behind is what I would say. So when you really look at the averages, if you see the mid caps not tracking up, if their chart lags what the overall market chart looks like when you put them side by side, then that is a, uh, a good way to, uh, to take a look at that. Okay, we're at 850. Looks like TIFF is gonna be in the red for that trade. It was TIFF short. So Apex continues the streak. Uh, look at Hertz halted again, now up at 459. Um, so yeah, if you haven't, if you, if you had this in your, in your uh, paper or real account today, you got to see what's have been halted four times in 20 minutes. Uh, stress level through the roof, right? Especially if you uh, bought, you know, it's a, such a price point. If you have 25,000 in your trading account and you're a pattern day trader, that gives you 100,000 of buying power and probably a little more. So maybe you're like, you know, I'm going to take it $5 a share. I'm gonna buy 20,000 shares of this. And then it gets halted and then it jumps 30 cents. Yeah, that can blow your R math right out of the water. So uh, just be a little careful. With these, with the stocks below five, that's where I would tend to pick up a couple hundred shares and then add, or a thousand shares and then add a thousand if you liked what was going on in the trade. Um, and I've seen, I think, Burner talk about adding to a trade um, there. So uh, good stuff to see. All right, let's clear out that top question. Okay, we'll go to the bottom one. Did companies that are huge today, Apple, Microsoft, that started small, begin a small cap category, then move to mid cap? Uh, I think so. Um, they, they, it's possible they could have IPO'd right into the large cap. Uh, the IPOs now, it seems like almost everybody does. Uh, it just explodes into the uh, into the large cap right away because most IPOs now are honestly o overpriced, kind of overrated. Uh, Nikola is one of the examples of that. Um, Nikola came out at, um, I want to say, 18 on Thursday. It wasn't, it was like DraftKings. It was an acquisition company bought it and flipped the ticker IPO. So not a traditional investment bank IPO. Went from like 18 to 40, then obviously went to almost 100. And now it's wherever it is. I have to look away for a minute. The thing's uh, going crazy. Um, so um, I don't know. Uh, I think more and so now, especially since there aren't that many IPOs because we've had such a negative cycle that uh, we haven't seen too many of them. All right, Burner adding some LK. I kind of like that. Let's wear LK. Looks like it's uh, screaming higher. It's gone from 4.1. It's up 50, 50 cents. Not quite in the green for the day, but it could find some green. I like LK. Need some coffee after today. What's going on in Hertz land? Uh, still not bouncing around, so still stopped at 4.6. What a journey that's been. I bet you there are some day traders uh, that have their story of the year for today off of the uh, move in Hertz, both up and down. All right, have eight minutes left, seven minutes left. I wanted to talk about IRAs real quick so you can continue watching that stuff while I uh, talk. And um, again, this may or may not, may not apply to you, if you have IRAs, individual retirement arrangements, technically those are called, you either have traditional Roth. If you're working with an employer, you could have a 401k. If it's a nonprofit, you have a 403b. If you're in the military, thrift savings plan, those sorts of things. They all follow generally the same rules. Um, when do I have to take a distribution from an IRA? Well, remember the rules used to be 70 and a half. That rule went away. We've had a busy year and a lot of crap's changing. But the rule used to be 70 and a half, and that changed with the SECURE Act at, uh, it was either November or December of 2019, before all this stuff descended upon us. And they moved the date from 70 and a half to seven, age 72, because if and I deal with uh, retirement uh, folks in another job, but most of those folks don't want that money. They, they don't want the money out of their IRA because they're going to have to pay tax on it. Again, if it's in a traditional and you take a distribution, you have to pay taxes on it. So you have to start taking them at 72. 
you have to drain your account over an extended life expectancy, which goes out to like 120 years. So since nobody's living that long, what does that mean? Your IRA, you'll draw it down as to whatever either you need to live, or if you just take the minimums, then you'll pass an inherited IRA on to either your spouse or your kids or whoever you want or donate it. Um, but somebody's going to get that and then they have their own set of rules to, uh, to deal with that. Uh, when can you take it? You can take it at 59 and a half is when you can start, start taking your distributions from a traditional IRA. You can file for a 72T election where you can take it earlier than that but you have to take period, you have to basically annuitize your IRA and take the same payments for the rest of your life. So if you have 300K and you're 40 years old and you go, I wanna start taking out of my IRA, you go to the, I'm a male, so I lived 82 years, that's 42 year span, pull the chart with irs.gov and it will tell you what your periodic payments are and you may be, um, uh, may, may not be uh, real pleased with what your monthly uh, gig would be there, uh, monthly payout. Um, if you're in a Roth IRA, once the Roth IRA has been open for five years, you can take the gains out at any time. Um, excuse me, take the, uh, what you put in out at any time. So money you put in, take out. I actually did that um, for right after I retired. So my, my, IRA, my Roth IRA is completely house money. Every dime I've ever put in it, I've taken back out of it. And the rest is all house money, which is a pretty good place to be. Um, I did that so I could live. Yeah, I shot myself in the foot a little bit, but I needed income while I stood up uh, a couple of businesses here. Okay, a CRD is a corona-related distribution. So that came out as part of the CARES Act, which means this year you can uh, take out up to $100,000 either loan from your 401k or withdraw $100,000 out of your traditional IRA or your Roth basically, and you have three, three years to put that back. The gotcha, which I just found from the IRS uh, last night, is that if you take it out of a traditional, um, the traditional uh, money, uh, say you take out 100,000. Well, for tax purposes, you have two choices. You can either take all of that in your 2020 taxes, pay taxes on it, and then if you pay the 100,000 back by three years from now, you'll file an amended, term, amended return to get all that tax money back. Or if you take 100,000 out this year, you can spread it out over three years, equal and equal amounts, pay taxes on all that. And then if you pay it all back by the time it's three years from now, and it uses the date that you actually took it, so three years to the day, then if you put it all back, then you have to go back and amend three years worth of taxes. So a little bit of a, uh, a dance to be able to do that. Um, obviously, if you're taking out a 401k, you can turn around and uh, plug it back in the rules that are a little bit different with your employer there. All right, uh, tax implications. You can take 100,000 out of a Roth in your CRD right now. No tax implications. It'll get marked as a distribution and you've got three years to pay it back. If you don't pay it back in three years, then you're gonna face a penalty uh, if it's above and beyond whatever you contributed. Uh, we talked about the Roth IRAs. Um, how hard is it to go back? You just have to pull up your old brokerage accounts statements. And there's a form 8646, I think, that goes into your taxes every year that shows the withdrawals, that shows the um, contributions you made. So that is the way to do that. If you've made any conversions, then you have to do some math uh, there as well. Uh, but you kind of have to check your own records. Um, so depending on how well you kept records, um, but the custodian would have that. Uh, if you have changed brokers, uh, you can still like Scott Trade bought TD Ameritrade, you can go back and you can call them or put a, basically a trade ticket in and they can go back and pull your old statements and send it to you. I don't know if they'll look up your answer, like how much have I contributed, I would start with that, but generally they will say, okay, well we can email you in a zip file your statements from Scott Trade, you know, this is TD Ameritrade now, from Scott Trade, from whenever you opened the account years ago, to be able to know that information. Okay, and last one, the inherited IRA. Again, this change with the Secure Act, and we'll close on this: is uh, the inherited IRA. If you inherit one of these and you're not a spouse, if it's your spouse, easy, just becomes yours, follows your rules. If it's not your spouse, i.e., your parents, and you get an IRA, you have 10 years basically to take it. 
So with the Roth, you can wait 10 years, let it grow 10 years, and take it all out in the other, the other time frame. It's traditional. If you do that, you're gonna have that big lump and tax hit. So most people will take out equally over 10 years. So we're out of time. Good questions today. Good trading. Predator, good job on uh, now day four in a row. Uh, that needs to end. But appreciate the input, guys, and we'll talk to you next time. Have a good one.